Boom. There we go. I think for once, for once, lads, I think I'm on time for one of these lives. Normally, I set it for a certain time and I'm about 10 minutes too late. So I think it's rare that we get one on time. It's where we get one on time. How's your Sunday going? Hope the weather is nice wherever you are in the world. In here in Dublin, it's it's been nice. It actually rained last night. But it's been pretty much sunny as hell all day today. It's nice. It's nice. We don't get a lot of it in Ireland. Even in the south of the UK. You guys get it way better over there than we do here. So we get a few people in. I seen um I seen Connor Ben tease. Well, I didn't I'm not I don't use Instagram too much, but I seen someone some people had screenshots of Connor Ben teasing an announcement. And this was about five o'clock this evening saying an announcement coming in the next hour. And of course, me looking at that, and I think the majority of people who would have watched this stream and who seen that would have thought, fight announced. It's a fight announced. It's a fight announced. No, it's not a fight announced. He put some, it's like NFL or something like that. I think it's, it's some bizarre thing anyway. And it was just, you know, that proper anti-climax. That's what that was. Now, he did say because you could only comment on it if you were following Conor Ben on the post he made on Twitter. So, obviously, I had a quick glance. And he did say in his own comments, he said, look, fight will be announced. He didn't specify what fight, but he goes, fight will be announced this week. <clears throat> so, Conor Ben's fight is going to be announced this week against who? And I, I, I use that who. More than likely, Eubank. Eubank, more than likely. Um, it's a weird one. The zone pay per view with Eubank Jr. against Conor Ben. A fight that, honestly, lads, I never would have thought possible. Seriously, like, just even saying that is like, that's bizarre. But we get a few people in the chat. Big up to Ben. First in the chat. Big up to you, man. I hope you're keeping well. Hope everything's going well for you, mate. Even to you, Nella Mono. Always on time for G-Man's lives. Yeah, you're more on time than I am, mate. Honestly, like, every single life he donates. Yeah, yeah. Don't, I didn't donate last night. Didn't donate to tie in last night. See? Big up to Ali Drew. And you're not first, pet. No, not this time, love. You're not first. <clears throat> you're not first. Big up to Luke or <laughs> Craig. I just saw the LUFC and I was like, Luke. Big up to Craig. Evening, G-Man. Evening, gentlemen, I should say. Big up to you, man. Big up to Das. Good evening, G-Man. For fuck's sake, it's John. Big up. Evening to you, man. Hope you're all keeping good, man. Top of the morning, you find swords, son. Yeah, big up to swords. Great place. Great place. Yeah, NFT. Right. Like, why, why put that on your story? That big announcement in the next era, especially when there's a fight being talked about between you and Eubank, and you're waiting for fight news, why tease it like that? Like, seriously, why tease it like that? And of course, I read a few of the comments, like, people couldn't, you couldn't get, get it out of a comment on it, but people were quoting it, and like, it was pretty much negative. I was like, why just, why not just announce that? Why do you have to, don't, don't announce it prior, just, just chuck that out there. Don't tease it as in big announcement coming, because you know what's going to happen then. Top of the morning, big up to Callum. Big up to Jamie. Delighted, man, delighted you're here. Mate, delighted for you. You hit 4K this week. Absolutely fucking delighted for you, man. Couldn't be happier, man. Delighted for you. I wasn't able to have a listen to your live on Thursday. Jamie knows, like, I don't be around most Thursday evenings. But, um, yeah, absolutely delighted, man. So, 8K here, 4K there. Man, we've got... You said you want to hit 5K by the end of the year. Mate, you're hitting 6K. I'd, I'd be very surprised if you're not at 6K by the end of the year. <clears throat> if it's, considering all that we have coming, you definitely got, you're definitely hitting 6K by the end of the year. And hopefully, hopefully I can get 10K sooner rather than later. You know, we're up to 8,350 now. So it's getting there, man. It's, it's getting there. It, 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 it's close, man. I really hope the Conor Ben Eubank fight doesn't happen. I just don't see how it's competitive. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, like, I, I guess if you if you want to look at it in terms of a financial point of view for both fighters, if if say for example, both fighters want to make the most money, yeah, you can see it from that point of view. But like realistically, like 
I don't see how Conor Ben wins it. His stock won't necessarily tank if he gets beat. Depends how he gets. If he gets absolutely blown out of the water, maybe even at welterweight, maybe. But with Eubank, it's a real case of like you're just you're fighting a small welterweight, you know. And it's not like Kell Brook moving up when Kell Brook was an established world champion and big at the weight. Conor Ben is Conor Ben really could do 140. He really could. He he could have done it for a long time, and. Yeah, like with Eubank, I get the impression with with Eubank and his team, they still have the demons, specifically of the George Groves fight. I think that fight still, I, I think with the Billy Joe fight, it happened so soon in Eubank's career, and it was so competitive. Well, it was Billy Joe won it, but he was competitive late on. That was one thing, but the Groves fight, because Groves really won that fight pretty clearly, you know, he won it, you know, handily. And I think that that kind of style, that long range style, if they're anyway fresh, James DeGale was just shot to pieces. I think that Team Eubank are super reluctant to even go in there with anyone, even remotely like that, who's anyway decent, you know? So I think for them, they're looking at people like, you know, Yalabek in at 160 pounds, Demetrius Andre, if he decides to stay back down at 160, they're probably looking at that and thinking, you know what, that style, we just cannot... That just does not work for us, that style. And Eubanks 32, another L. Really? I'm sure they're thinking, look, you're going to make an absolute bomb. You want the money. We want the money. Let's just go and have the kind of end fight and see what happens down the line with other fights. I, I think that's the kind of thinking for Team Eubank because, you, you know, it really, to me, it's just a, it's a head scratcher. Like, I mean, it makes no sense other than for money. Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Now my official number one go-to man for boxing news. Big up, man. Yeah, that's what I, I always try and get it live. Always, or get it out as soon as I can. First come for boxing news. Like, I'll probably even do a video. I'll try and, like, get whenever... If whatever fight they announce for Ben this week, you can bet your bottom dollar I'll be one of the first out there just talking about it. I think of Pierce O'Leary. I didn't see his fight last night. Actually, it's a good job you mentioned that because um, the Warren card last night that was on, I think personally that was one of Warren's best cards for a while now. I mean, that was in the copper box and it wasn't full, which was a bit bad on the eyes because the copper box isn't exactly a big arena. But I thought that he had a tremendous card on last night. That was very good. I thought that Mark Heffron, I thought Lennox Clark would beat Mark Heffron. Going into this fight, I thought Lennox Clark is, especially at 168, he's been looking quite good lately. He got that win over Willie Hutchinson. And he lost a very close decision to Lerone Richards. And I thought he's got the momentum. Heffron against ben, Bentley, Denzel Bentley, back in 2020. It, Bentley impressed me a lot in that fight. And I thought that Heffron kind of fell on his level. And I thought Clark at 168 would be a bridge too far. But boy, was I wrong. G-Man, the main man, yeah. Ty Ambu, a big bum. He wasn't a great boxer. We could take him. Definitely not. No, it was not that. Hope Ben doesn't end up like Blackwell. To be honest with you, I don't think Ben takes a shot the best. It's just, I have a suspicion that his probably not, put resistance probably isn't the greatest. So I suspect that Eubank will probably get rid of him fairly quickly. Even G-Man and the chap. Ben's the, does Ben still have the comments off? Yeah. Yeah, he turned... Well, last time I checked, the comments were still off. G-Man's got the bag, any? I wish, man. I wish. Still convinced Ben next opponent will be Hooker. Do you know something? With Ben, I wouldn't even rule it out. I wouldn't rule it you, God only knows who they'll announce. If this Eubank fight wasn't being talked about, I'd say probably Hooker. But um, I don't know at this stage. It probably is Eubank, to be honest with you. But... With Conor Ben and the way his fights get announced and stuff like that, and the way, like, you know, a big opponent, the massive opponent, the huge name, really? Chris Algieri, what? That kind of thing. You just don't know. You just don't know. I'd say it probably is Eubank, to be honest. Even to Nick, big up to you, man. I hope all is well for you. Big up to Martin, even the G-man. I just wonder how Conor will get up to 156 or, what, or uh, whatever it is. Not going to train for something. 
maybe hit the custard creams. He's probably just not going to cut any weight, I'd imagine. So I'd say probably when he's weighing in for welterweight, he's probably in around that weight, maybe a bit higher, maybe a little bit higher. So I'd say he's probably just not going to do any weight cuts, more than likely. Um, article says Eubank versus Ben will prematurely injure as every fight doesn't have that, that risk and Eubank isn't on that list of hardest hitting middleweights at all. I can't wait for this fight. I'm not really looking forward to it as much, mate, but yeah, well, I, I'd say Eubank will probably have enough power. I mean, if Cedric Payne can drop Ben, Eubank definitely can. And yeah, 75 in the building. If you could, lads and lassies, hit the old like button. 27 likes at the minute. Let's try and get it up to 50. <sighs> mate, honestly, like, they'll sell that as, is it, do you know what that will be? That will be Ben Eubank tree. That's how they'll sell that. They'll sell it exactly like that. I thought the whole point of the zone was to avoid these pay-per-view fights. I guess in hindsight, we kind of knew this was always going to happen. I'm not talking about Ben Eubank. I'm just in pay-per-view. When you look, no disrespect to these fighters, but when you're paying Jesse Vargas, when you're paying Liam Smith, when you're paying Demetrius Andre, way more, like, not way more money than they're able to bring in, and you're not just doing that as a once-off. You're doing it consistently. At some point, the heads of the zone are going to look and say, this can't go on. And not just that this can't go on. We seriously need to recoup some of this. So in that aspect, I can imagine the pay-per-view was kind of almost inevitable, if you think about it. At first, I was against this fight. Now I'm kind of sold. Really? No spelling title, man. Big up. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, man. And like, I didn't even realize, I didn't even pay it attention. It was just a pop it up. There you go. Boom. See you later. Uh, shouldn't the fight be at 154? You'd think that, but two pounds, I tell you one thing, two pounds for someone like Eubank, if Ben was big, was a bigger Houthi founder, it would be a no-brainer. Sadly not. Yeah, no, I mean, Ben's small at welterweight. You'd think 154, but depends how bad they want to get this. And the two pounds for Eubank at that point be a bit of an issue Eubank's career has been all about dollar and not achievement if he was honest uh his dad turned the same way after beating michael watson um time we stop talking about him seriously if he does this yeah you know i i think as i said the george Groves fight i do think at the start of itv when they were on itv boxing the the goal was to make money from the itv pay-per-view and to be fair some of them cards weren't bad but they were kind of like learning and fight sold pay-per-view, trying to sell that IBO title. And I think that by the time, because you got to figure it, right? He beat Quinlan. Quinlan was, was not that good. He only had one L at the time, but he wasn't that good. Beat Abraham, who was faded, but he beat him in good fashion. Then Abney Yildirim, who was undefeated at the time. And a lot of people, because he was a big unit at 168, because he knocked James the Gale's teeth out, People were kind of speculating, okay, okay, now hang on a minute. This could be an interesting fight. Now, Eubank, and, and Yildirim's lost several times since then. A lot of people, I think at the time, me included, thought, okay, maybe Eubank is turning the corner here. He's hitting a bit harder. He's getting rid of these guys. He's looking all right. And I think at that point, they figured, right, he's ready for a George Groves, a Callum Smith, someone like that, Ramirez. And I think that when they had that George Groves fight, they were brought right back down to earth. And I don't think team, not just you, I don't think his team, even him and his team have really been able to fully get over that George Groves loss. Because the Billy Joe was earlier in his career, he was in it for a little bit. With Groves, it was a real case of he was just outboxed. And I think that ever since then, it was a case of find the, find the easiest way to make money and find the easiest way to a title. And that's what I think is happening now. 32, when you rely on athleticism. Yeah, 32 in the grand scheme of things is young. But when your style is based upon athleticism and speed, it's not, especially when you're not a heavyweight, it starts to look a bit older then at that point. Is this the kind of mission from both sides of motors? They are not really good enough for top dogs in their respective divisions. Possibly, possibly. Now, with Ben, it's a different situation. With Ben, it's a case of, like, he can come back down. They'll probably try and rebuild them and try and make more money over that. But possibly, yes. Possibly. Should Eubank Jr. make the fight in three years? 
I don't, I, I don't think the fight should really be talked about in general, to be honest with you, man. I mean, I think even in three years, Ben's not a 154-pounder. And this is going to be a 156, like so. By the way, we're looking for a new PM over here, G-Man. You interested? Maybe. Maybe. I don't think I'd last too long as a PM. I'd be popular, but I don't think I'd be popular with the other PMs. I said the other PMs. I mean politicians. I don't think I'd be popular with them. I'd have a lot of policies. I'd have a lot of policies that the people would love. But, um, yeah. So, I don't think so. I don't think so. Who will replace good old Bojo? Ma? Who will replace him? Eubank was retired uh, at the same age junior, yeah. I mean, Eubank, when he... Yeah, Eubank, after he lost to Collins, that's kind of when like he really started to kind of decline a bit. He went up to Cruiserweight then. Every six weeks on Sky or so... For the money, actually lost a couple of fights, if we're honest. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was a couple of shaky decisions in there. Definitely. I thought McCann looked pretty good. I did. I did. T I thought he showed better punching power, better shot selection. This mother has worked a little bit in the first round. But overall, I thought this was an improvement. He didn't look the best in his last two fights. He fought a guy. Was it his last fight or the fight before? Who was stopped down a flyweight. And McCann couldn't really put a dent in him. So I'm I'm happy. Now, he is only 21 years old. He needs he has time. But personally, like I was kind of I was really high on him at the start when he turned over. Then he kind of stagnated a bit. But right now he's he's looking he's looking good again. He's looking good again. I'm happy with what I'm seeing from Dennis McCann. Yeah, I picked um I genuinely thought that uh that he would I thought he'd probably win it on points, but hey, Mark Heffron proved me wrong. Would be major wrong. Big up to Mark Heffron, by the way. Frank cards have been better. Mac have been better than matchroom cards. Have been better matchroom matchmaking. Sorry, let me say matchroom cards. Has uh, cards have been better matchmaking than Eddie's cards or Sky cards. The yeah, matchmaking's been good. Frank Warren, you see, for all we complain about him, he is good at bringing a fighter along. He is. He, he's obviously with Dubois. Well, did Dubois to an extent, but with, with Yard, that was different. Threw the book out for that one. But for the most part, Warren is good at bringing his fighters along. He is. And he picks the right fights at the right times. And he, he's not bad for that now, Frank Warren. So you got to give him credit for that. And, you know, that card itself last night, I mean, I switched on at about, I can't remember the guy's name now, but it was before Heffron fought. God almighty, what was his name? Nicky Ball, the guy who fought on the Fury um, white card. And all the fights were decently competitive. Like, that fight was competitive, even though Nicky Ball won it in the 12th round. But there wasn't, like, a fight where you just think, oh, this is a mismatch. They were all good competitive scraps. You know, even, okay, yeah, Dennis McCann clearly won his fight, but the guy at least tried, didn't keel over. So, yeah, I was happy with the card Frank Warren put on last night. You know, he's been get his cards have been getting stronger and stronger. He's, not, he's definitely getting back to where, he's obviously not going to be where he was in the 90s. But in terms of what they were, like what well, his cards were a year ago, Jesus, it's night and day. It's night and day. His last few cards have been pretty good. Cornelius Jenkins, big up. Shout out to GMAT Box and much love from Venice, Florida, US. Mate, I, that is the place. Number one on my list that I want to see is Florida. Anywhere in Florida. Whether it's, you know, on the Keys. Miami, not so much, to be honest with you. But Florida, oh, mate, I really, really, really want to go Florida. Big up to IA, big up to Jack. We know Ben doesn't have a great chin. Um, who's that? But Paynell, Cedric Paynell, a French journeyman, it's fair to say. And he's not one of them journeymen you look at and you see punch and power with, if you know what I mean. You know the way there are some journeymen out there when you see them fight, even though they're limited, even though there's not much there, you can see that there's punch and power. You know that sort of way? You can see that there's power in their shots. With pay now, the shots that drop Ben, they didn't look like much to the honest. They just looked like fairly innocuous. Blackwell's bravery and durability was his undoing uh, that night. He got a uh, pasting and his corner should have pulled him out. Yeah, I mean, the, the Nick Blackwell story is a tragic one. Like, obviously, he's still alive, but I still can't get over the fact that he he pulled through all that. He was he was okay, and then he goes inspired again later that year. It was crazy. 
66 in the chat let's make it 60 likes 120 in the building now people if you could if you could smash the like button we're at 40 likes let's see if we can get it up to 50 get to 50 likes let's see if we can do it it's crazy the numbers we're getting in these streams lately even the g-man how popular is keevan and jacko in ireland i've let i literally hear nobody like no one mentioned him so not that popular i like him i think he's a decent fighter but literally no one's heard of him in Ireland. Like in terms of Irish fighters, Kay Taylor's the most popular. Probably Conlon will be second. And that's it really. I mean, like most other Irish fighters are pretty obscure in terms of their, some will be popular in their like local county. Like I'd say Pierce O'Leary is, is from Limerick, I think. So he'd be popular down there, but not to the rest of the county, country. Well, yeah, that's in response to that. But yeah, he not many people. I don't think I've, if I said his name, even in probably hardcore circles, only a few would probably know who he is. He was kickboxing world champion, wasn't he? Pay out. I'm getting sick of this new match, uh, this new matchroom narrative of Fury stalking Usyk. Usyk has to rematch AJ first. We'll see how we'll see what happens in the immediate aftermath of that rematch. What happens with Fury and Usyk? If Usyk gets through, because I think if AJ wins, there's no doubt in my mind that Fury will take that fight. No doubt in my mind that he'd fight AJ next. But if Usyk wins, let's wait and see. No, he doesn't. I don't know if he could do. No, he he started at one four seven the whole way, but he was quite light in the one four sevens. Like he was weighing like one forty three, one forty four. And yeah, they didn't want him to campaign at 147, but he said in a post fight interview that he likes lifting weights, so it's just easier to stay at 147. I was like, well, that's good luck with that. Ben Eubank, how mark no, how market and work room, work that room. Yeah, I mean, like that will still sell, like, don't get me wrong, it will still sell. Can heavyweight boxers be popular like NFL in the US if it was properly pushed? See, I don't know how popular a lot of them guys are, to be honest with you, but I've no doubt that if you had a real, like if you had an American heavyweight champion who was, a, like Wilder can be charismatic, but he just doesn't seem to have that endearing personality. You could get an endearing heavyweight in the US, be a, a champion and, and probably be top of the division. I'm sure they could, but I mean, I, I don't see it. Possibly Anderson, but we'll have to wait and see. Hoping to say we pump a load of money into Usyk, AJ, Carabadu, Jack. Yeah. Well, the last time they fought, AJ fought in Saudi Arabia was obviously against Ruiz. And that card was good. Everyone wants to say that was a good card. You had the Hunter Molina fight, or not the Hunter, you had the Hergovich Molina fight. That was what it was. You had the White versus Wack fight, which in turn turned out to be a lot more competitive. And obviously the Hunter Pavekin fight, but that was a really good fight. So it wasn't a bad card. But this one, we're a little over a month away, and we've had very little announcements on fights. It'll be interesting to see if Piccoli's on this card. Very interesting. Eddie said the zone have to have pay-per-view functionality only for the big fights. Yeah. I mean, like, what the hell? So much for that's the end of pay-per-view. Ah, uh, this fight makes no sense. Uh, what a stupid, what stupid matchmaker for matchroom. They do not know how to match make Eddie cannot deliver to any welterweight as he's effed off the PBC. Yeah, that hasn't helped. Certainly that hasn't helped. And at welterweight and at 154, it's PBC. Like, I mean, you have to be in good with them. And like, if you think about it like this, like people were talking about Key Terman. And I said that like, I possibly, <clears throat> but I couldn't see it because Terman would want crazy money. Like Terman, has been getting paid even before he had his hiatus one of the reasons why he was only fighting once a year was because he was getting paid very well by al Heyman, very well so for him for, for him to go over to the uk and fight conor ben away from home he's probably going to want crazy money and i'm just thinking would eddie hearn be willing to take a hit on a show a big hit to give key term and crazy money to come over i don't think he would and it's such a risky fight at the same time Usyk has his last fight with the zone versus AJ. Imagine if he wins, then signs with Sky. <sighs> For some reason, I think he will. Um, if Usyk wins, I'd say he'll go to top rank 
he'll just go over work with Bob Arum personally. And that still piss Hearn off, but maybe not as much as Sky. Mm. He's well, he's been up about 168. And he was talking about struggling at middleweight a few years ago. Maybe he's doing it easier now, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, Eubank is shredded at 160. He is. If it was at 154, a title could be could be had as the regular belt at 154 is vacant. Junior middleweight, yeah, but I mean, like, really, like, I mean, that wouldn't, like, you, you couldn't sell that as a real title. Like, Charlo was the undisputed champ at that division. But yeah, I get where you're coming from there, and no doubt WBA would probably do it. How many American stars does Matt Drum has, still have? Who's the biggest? Canelo, definitely. Um, Canelo. You know, they missed out on Keyshawn Davis. You know, Keyshawn Davis fought a couple of times on the zone before the Olympics and he signed with top rank. I think that's a mistake. They should have locked Keyshawn Davis in. But obviously, Bam Rodriguez, I think he is a star in the making. And that's a good move by the zone and Eddie Hearn to sign him. Definitely. I mean, Bam Rodriguez is tremendous. And he's fighting on Canelo's undercard now, coming up. So, he's a good call. He's a good scalp to have. I'm trying to think who else they have now. From the States. That I would look at and think, hmm. Get yeah, back to you on that one, but there are a couple of names that the zone definitely have in the States. And obviously with Canelo, it's not ideal because he's only fighting on a kind of fight by fight basis. Board of Novality Fights now looking for you mean the British Boxing Board looking forward to uh Wadley Gorman for the British title. Yeah, yeah. Uh British boxing much better fights than the otherwise fight is KSI. Yeah, I know that's coming up soon. Um I like that fight personally. I think that Nathan Gorman, if he could be in decent shape, he has a very good chance against Fabio Wadley. Very good chance. Would you give Hamza a shot against Eubank? Hamza looked good, man. He looked good. He's been looking good for a while now. I was the Bradley Skeet fight did leave a bit of a bad taste in, in my mouth, and I think it left a bad taste in other people's mouths. Holy shit, I'm missing a lot of chats here. <laughs> I didn't realise how, how far the chat was going. Um, Jeez, I, I'm missing a load of them here, mate. Look who it is. Big up to Chris. It's been a big week for Chris and Jamie. Chris hit 5K over the weekend. I think it's over the weekend, mate. Yes, G-Man. Call me a sucker, but I'm excited for Ben Eubank. The build-up alone is going to be amazing. I think this will be will be all-action stuff as long as it lasts. Now, I'd be interested to see Chris's breakdown because Chris does the best technical breakdowns in boxing. And he is the one person who, if he did, if he did a breakdown... And he did it like, I'm so, what Chris needs to do is do something like what I do, was where you do three reasons why you feel this fight will win and fight this fight will win. Because if you did it for Conor Ben, I'd probably end up picking him by the end of it. That's how good Chris is at those breakdowns. And thank you to the lovely Karma Serene for the 20 quid. Thank you so much, my dear. OMG, I haven't seen you win forever. I know, I know. But we're here. And I hope all's keeping well with you. And I hope everything's going good with you. And I appreciate the 20 quid, my dear. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. I really do appreciate that. And 133 in the building. Yeah, if you could, lads and lassies, smash the like button. I appreciate all the support. We've been doing great on this. We've been doing great on here lately. I mean, I can't believe it. Like, it's crazy. I think, like, my my 30 day average for like the last month is like 600 subs. So, man, I'm thinking that is flipping crazy. Yeah, Chris Andre, super busy, uh, but dropped in to smash the like button. Big up to Shane. Thank you, man. Thank you. Ben should fight Stanionis. Or, sorry, Cavalasca, Stabionis, or Avenisian. They're all tricky fights. I think Avenisian is the easiest out of them. And that's not an easy fight. Stanionis is good. Cavalasca's the size. Like, Cavalasca's is huge. Avenisian, I think, is, is one. I, I still don't understand why they don't take that fight. Uh, this is the most obvious. He's not ready for a Boots or an Ortiz. Terman will wait and see, but he's definitely, I mean, Boots Ennis would beat the living crap out of him. Well, the way fire should not go to Eddie Hearn, as Eddie Hearn can make, should not go to Eddie Hearn, as Eddie Hearn can't make decent fights, as he has pissed off the PBC. He's definitely not been the best with them. Best Audrey Harrison video is when he asks, who this being you keep talking, who is this being you keep talking? <laughs> Big up to Audley. Big up to Audley anyway. Big up to Audley every time. Is the fight confirmed? Well, I thought we were going to get a confirmation today, mate. I really did. 
I really did think we were going to get a confirmation today. Obviously not. Conor Ben announced something else. People underrating, uh, underrate Ryan Garcia. Yeah, I haven't talked about him yet, actually. I've seen his fight last night. i um, seen it this morning. He looked good. He, he did look good. You know, offensively, Ryan Garcia has it. You know, there's no question about that. He has it. He's got punch and power. He's got speed. He's tremendous offensive. I still do want to see him tighten up that defense and the little mistakes he's making. Once again, AJ is fighting with the pressure of an entire TV network on his back. A TV network before he's even joined with them. WBA will do anything for a few quid there, ranking shows. It's remarkable, isn't it, really? And you see, it's in, in a way, like, it's, I'm not bigging them up for this. So don't, I'm not bigging them up. But it's smart if you think about it. Because you, by WBA giving guys, like, remember they gave Cooper at Pool a really high ranking. That is giving promoters an incentive to like look at Cooper Apulev and say, well, hang on a minute, he's he's high up there in the rankings. Okay, get the old checkbook out now. We want to give Daniel Dubois a high ranking. There you go, WBA. There you go, Poop. Or it wasn't Pulev, it was Dino. There you go. Now we have a high ranking. So it's almost like they're they're kind of they're giving these fighters who don't deserve a high ranking a high ranking. No one promoters will be coming knocking and saying, can we have that guy? Can, we, can our guy fight him? Oh, well, here's, here's a bit of money. There you go. Because if you think about it, if you have a number two ranked heavyweight and it's Michael Hunter and you want to give your prospect a shot at a, a regular title, you're not going to be there. be like, he's not fighting Michael Hunter. He's not putting him in there with him. But Bogdan Dino, there you go. Take my money. Yeah, they had him. They had him. They had him in 2016 for two fights. Ryan Garcia is good. few flaws, obviously, but sharp and dangerous as they come with some shots. He is a reasonable chance against anyone. Him against Tank Davis is the fight I'd like to see. I really like that fight. I really do. I really do. Ben facing Jesus Soto Carasas next? Oh, please no. <laughs> oh, please no. Um, They have the Dalton Smith card coming up in Sheffield in August. Sent off an application to um, do some media work at that. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. That's in Sheffield, and that's it. You know, they don't have any. They have, obviously, AJ versus Usyk 2, which is obviously going to happen on Sky. Um, That's it, really, for the zone in terms of up-and-coming fights. Now, they might... Well, not really. I mean, like, I was trying to think. Like, there's not many up-and-coming cards, so... Yeah, there's not many between then and now. Like, you would expect September time, kind of, you'd be getting announcements kind of roughly now or maybe in the next week or so, so... Yeah, there's not many coming up, mate. That's a good spot. That's a good show. Will I be doing any more hype videos? Yes, I will. 100%. Of course I will. They're fun to do, those hype videos. In Jago versus Fowler be a decent scrap? It would be, but Fowler's at 160 now, and Jago's at 154. Undoubtedly, Roy will bring out the best in you, Bank. Well, not necessarily. Like, I've said this before. Like, Roy Jones Jr., one of my all-time favorite fighters to watch. But just because they were a great fighter doesn't mean necessarily it's going to translate to be a great trainer. You know, we see that all the time. We see it in football all the time. So just because Roy is a great fighter, or was a great fighter, does not necessarily mean he's going to be a great trainer necessarily. If Ramirez fights Beth Bivol, what's your prediction? No, I'd still go for Bivol to win. Win it on points, probably. Win it on points. Dibby Robinson, are you sick? <laughs> Someone named that. Audley Harrison was an absolute legend. He was just too civilized to be a professional fighter. He had the skill, but didn't like being punched in the face. So a sane neurotype of guy then. Yeah. Like oddly oddly put pressure on himself, and I don't think he could really handle it per personally. I don't think he ever really fully could. I think there's a lot of flaws with Oddly. His style didn't really translate into the pro game. There was a lot of flaws with Oddly's game. Maybe he deserves a WTF video. Wouldn't wouldn't it be a surprise if Ben's next opponent was Chavez Senior right now? Well, that Chavez Senior. I mean, honestly, at this stage, that guy just needs to. Oh, you mean Senior? Yeah, I thought you meant Junior. Um, ah, no, it wouldn't be that bad. I thought you were going to say Junior. I was going to say, because that guy is just, I don't know what, he's away with the fairies. Is Babbage fighting Alan? 
I hope not personally, um, for Dave Allen's sake, because I don't really want to see Dave Allen stay boxing because he's had a hard career, a hard, hard career. And Dave Allen's not that old, but some of the beatings he's taken, I mean, I, I think we sometimes forget how hard a career he's had. I mean, he got a bad beating against Ortiz. It was only over eight rounds. He took a big beating against David Price for 10 rounds. But nothing will top the beating he took from Yoka. That was horrendous. He really, that just, that was just so silly. And he didn't even train for it. Why he took that, I've got no idea. At this stage for Dave Allen, and even the fights he's won, like against Bragamonte, he took a lot of shots in that fight. I think he needs to just call it a day. He's obviously come back for reasons I don't know. But when you look at the sparring footage against him and Usyk, that showed to me that the punch resistance was gone. Like Even in sparring, that showed me that Alan's chin, his punch resistance is just gone. So for me, for him to come back and to fight someone like Babbage, the Babbage isn't probably, in fact, I'd say for definite, probably Usyk hits harder than Babbage. Babbage is just more aggression, sheer aggression, brute force, and just work rate. But even then, like, I just don't want to see it. I don't want to see it personally. I hope we don't see it. Listening from our new hot tub with a beer in hand, if Carlsberg did Sundays. Mate, that is the dream, isn't it? Damn. New hot tub, beer in hand, if Carlsberg did Sundays. One day, mate. One day. That's the goal for me, one day. One day for me, goal is... Beer in hand, set up my garden, obviously a Moretti, they're my drink, that's my drink of choice. Knowing that it's all good, everything's good in the hood. I don't have to go and do a job I don't like, I can just, I have my, I'm my own boss, I can do my own thing. That's the goal, that is the goal. One day, mate, one day. I would imagine, oh, I, was, I thought we were going to ask, was he going to fight on the Canelo card? Because I think that fight was originally set for Bivol Canelo. Well, that fight needs to get over the line. And hmm, I would imagine so. It wouldn't surprise me if they did. Look, I don't think that's a particularly competitive fight personally. But Zili Zhang has power. I mean, we know that. I mean, he, he, if there's one thing he has, it's power. So let's wait and see when that fight gets announced. Because I'll be interested to watch that fight. I think Zili Zhang's going to get battered, but... I'll wait and see. Roy wasn't technically that good. He just had super. Yeah, I mean, Roy Jones, like, honestly, like, if you go, even, like, his his highlight reels are good. But when you actually go and watch just his full fights, I mean, like, the guys just couldn't do anything with Roy Jones. He was a freak of nature. He fought a guy in Atlantic City, I think it was. And I can't remember the guy's name. David Tesso or something like that his name was. And Roy Jones had played a basketball game. I think it was semi-pro that afternoon. And then defended his light heavyweight titles that evening. And I think that was the fight where Roy Jones went to the corner during like the round. And was like waving the guy and being like, come on, hit me, hit me. Come on, you can't hit me, so hit me. It wasn't the fight where he knocked the guy out with his hands behind his back. I think that was David Kelly, I think his name was. But yeah, Roy was just something else. Can't understand why whoever doesn't get a shot at one of the heavyweights uh, with a pulse. He's dynamite. He's dynamite, but he doesn't really bring anything to the table. He really doesn't. And I think a lot of fighters see easier and probably more financially healthier ways of getting to a title rather than going through him. Counterpunch says he sparred Marky in Albania yesterday, and he can whack. He has a puncher's chance of beating Ben. You know, Marku shows that. You know, you can see that with the way he throws his shots he definitely has a bit of power there you're sparring market with albania mate that's incredible albania is a country as well on my list that's a country as well i'm definitely um keeping an eye on but that's interesting and marky you can see he has the power and there's a fighter that i think eddie hearn let slip through his fingers he had marky marky sells yes g man you'll get there bro i hope so mate i hope so i hope so that's the dream that's the dream that's the dream that's what I said. Like some weeks, I'm just like on a Sunday, like fuck this, and I'm just thinking, like why? But look, you gotta go through. You know, it's not given to you on a silver platter. You know, that sort of way. You just gotta go through it. And we get there. We get there. 
course we will. Two and active, like uh, Yoka may get done. I think Hergovic is a safer bet than Yoka, to be honest. Um, but I see your, uh, you make a very good point there about the inactivity. And I, I, I actually, it's a very good point actually you made because if you look at his weights, his weights have actually increased over the years and not in a good way. He's looked a lot softer. And I think that has a large part to play in with it, the inactivity and the fact that his, his opponent caliber just isn't good enough. He's not getting up to get in really good shape to fight these guys. And I think that that's having a hindrance on him. Toss on Chisora Wilder, G. Big up to the outlaw. Um, I hope not. I hope we don't see that fight. Personally, I just think Chisora should call it a day. He got the win back against Pulev. He's done all right for himself in his career financially. Just call it a day, mate. Just please, for your own sake. Yeah, we're doing well tonight with the numbers, peeps. We're doing well tonight with the numbers. We're doing very well. They're doing very good with the numbers tonight. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. So if you could keep smashing the like, please do. Rumoured to be fighting Carl Thompson. IFL Coogan Freed. <laughs> oh, you read that there. That is brilliant. That's tremendous. That is tremendous name. IFL Coogan Free Daniel. There you go. I don't think he's not been arrested yet. I don't think. Roy Joel was untouchable. He was, man. He was. You think Ward Duck Bivel? I don't know. Ward Bivel fought on the Kovalev rematch on the card. And Ward retired after that. So I wouldn't call that a duck. I think and Ward's not come back. He's not teased at coming back. Well he's made, he's hinted the other, but he, he kind of knew that was never gonna go anywhere. It's the greatest of all time of boxing, I'm pretty sure it's scientifically proven. Oh, la oh, mate, if Roy Jones had retired after beating Tarver and Ruiz, let's say he came back down, because he won the Tarver fight legitimately. Like that, People say the first Tarver fight was controversial. No, he won that fight clearly. Clearly, it was more competitive than his other fights, but go and watch that fight, score it round for round, he won it. As far as I'm concerned, like I, I remember um, obviously reading about that fight. Obviously, when I started getting real at the box and thinking, I better watch this fight because Roy Jones looked bad. People say he lost. No, 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 no. I think that was more people at the time being amazed that someone was this competitive against Roy Jones. If you actually watch it, he won it. Roy Jones won that fight. Oh, he won that fight. Does Chris Eubank fight for it? I doubt it. I, I, I doubt it, mate. I really do. Would, who would you have if AJ versus Hergovic would happen? Um... Depends on the nature of the loss. Obviously, if AJ loses to Usyk, depends on the nature of the loss. But right now, I, I'd still go with AJ. How quickly should Ben Whittaker be moved? I'd say Sky are going to probably move a bit quickly with him. I do. They have a card coming up at the end. Oh, yeah, the end of this month. They have um, Bill Smith versus Chamberlain. In a fight. I'm really looking forward to it. That's a good fight. I'm, fa I, I'm taking Chamberlain in that fight. Sora versus Bacoli, even then, like I'd probably still go. I'd go with Bacoli to win that. I actually Zora's finished me. Zora's done. Big up the textbook boxing. What do you think Paterbiev or sorry? What fights do you think Paterbiev will get before the end of his career? And how do you think he'll be remembered? Would he have beaten Stevenson and Kovalev? I think he would have beaten Kovalev, yes. Stevenson yeah, I think he would have broke him down, but Stevenson was good at just keeping it at bay, sharp shooting, and he had a great left hand. But I think I think he would have beaten Kovalev. And Shane, big up, thank you so much for the contribution. You got to keep doing what you're doing, G-Man. I know, man, I know. We keep pushing. We keep, we'll keep get there, man. It's like that where everyone like it. The only way you don't get there, and I'm not one of these guys who's big into these whole motivational speeches and stuff like that. I never really liked any of that. But one thing you gotta say, you only it, you only lose when you stop. You know, so like if you stop thinking like, oh, this is this, and this. That's why when I see people like around me who I, like care about and stuff like that and get down and shit like that, I'm always like, come on, come on, no, 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 just, just don't, just keep going. It, you'll get there in, in the end. And thank you, mate, for the 10 quid. I appreciate that so much. Chris Ariola said, or Chris Andrea said, Mark Heffron can beat Canelo. I haven't seen Chris's video yet. I doubt he said that. I doubt he did. Big up to Chris. In a few years, no, man, that's never going to happen. I'm not, I don't like any of that stuff. But, like, there's a lot of truth to it. 
you know when i listen to guys like Le well i've heard of guys like les brown and stuff like that and i never really liked any i was always just kind of like just kind of like that i'm just like hey, you're talking absolute bs some people like that and that's fine but there's a lot of truth in things i mean like if you just lay down if you say to life just run me over it will run you over so don't do that just keep on chugging forward every little bit does help me appreciate that and yes thank you so much again i appreciate every contribution on here man 100 percent appreciate everyone yeah it was really good and um, that's the one thing i was a bit upset about i didn't see pierce o'leary's fight i hear i heard he showed brilliant punching power so that's interesting because you don't see too many irish fighters with good punching power it's the way they train over here a lot of them don't really a lot of them aren't trained to hit very hard so i have to have a look at pierce o'leary's fight um mccann i see in ball i see in frank warren is getting the nice little stable of fighters there he is he's getting the nice little stable of fighters and i think that some of the fighters who maybe have left mtk will be looking at warren as a potential place to go you know and, and i think like at the end of the day right bt isn't sky but it's still a big brand it's still a big platform to be associated on they have a lot of different sports so warren now and after having done the wembley card i think that warren is an attractive look for a lot of fighters you know he's he's even signed a female fighters he signed raven chapman who i've had on here before so big up to her she's with warren now i think she's out now and hopefully sooner rather than later and big up to nate why do you go ryan garcia now 140 uh that division is spicy up there with tio yeah i want to see how tio looks up at that weight division because that's going to be interesting to see how he looks especially after the loss it's going to be interesting very very interesting it's going to be very interesting to see how he looks I think Dennis McCann has promised, but to be truly elite, he needs to learn. Um, he needs to learn to attack from both sides. Mm -hmm. He seemed to smother his work a lot there in the first round. Like he buzzed him, I think it was with a left hook, and he he went on the attack, and that's good. He has that instinct, but he really smothered it bad. And I noticed that straight away. I was like, no, shouldn't be doing that. Be Kovalev twice in the amateurs. Yep, I think he would have beaten him in the pros. I think he was mandatory for Kovalev at one point. Um, and then he had them issues with Ivan Michel. I think he would have beaten Kovalev personally, just from the from Styles. I think he would have broke Kovalev down. I do. I think he would have broke him down. Okay, yes, I has more skill than Hatton. Whatever you want to say about Campbell Hatton, and look, I think Campbell Hatton is garbage. He wants to be a fighter, and you can't knock someone for that. Tommy Fury, on the other hand, is someone who people compare him to. Tommy Fury doesn't want to be a fighter. He just wants to be a celeb. That's all Tommy Fury wants. So for Campbell Hatton, as poor as he is, and he is poor, I respect him for chasing it. You know, you got to respect him for that. You got to respect he wants to be a fighter. You know, Tommy Fury doesn't. You can tell that. What do you think of the comparison of Dennis McCann to a young Calzaghe? Well, no, I don't see it at all. I mean, like, speed, fast hands, yeah, but I, I can't really see a comparison between him and a young calzaghi no has connor ben made his announcement mate the, the the short answer yes but not the fight not the fight it's um that was a tease that was a right tease what was it i'll get it for you here so we announced on his instagram that he'd be basically a big announcement the next hour and his announcement was pre-launch of my nft and exclusive club is here your support since the start of my career i'm not even going to finish reading that because that was such a tease that was a real case of like just god almighty that was a tease count smith versus boatsy i go for count smith in that fight now that boatsy i don't think he will mate i genuinely think that ramirez will go step aside that's a risky 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 fight it's a risky fight uh ben or staniones i go for staniones ben was so disrespectful yeah but that was just to, to just announce just, just put it up on twitter don't tease an announcement you, now Laurel richards is an interesting one because eddie hearn's not done anything with him he got that win over the guy his name escapes me but i actually i didn't think he'd win and he did the argentinian fighter 
And I really did think, okay, Eddie Hearn will push Laurent Richards now. He's done nothing since then. So it wouldn't shock me. would not shock me. And the shows have really, they've been stagnating. Like, there's not been as many shows happening. Now, I know, I know, summertime is normally not a time that's the busiest in boxing. I mean, if you look through the history, you know, 2019, 2018, you normally don't get consistent shows over that time. You normally don't. Another example, another good fighter um, who I haven't really taught much of, but Zach Parker's impressed me over the last few years. He was meant to fight Demetrius Andre, Pride Park, I think it was, and now nothing. So we'll wait and see. He'd been fighting on some Queensbury shows prior to that, so maybe Warren will give him a run out, but it's, it's an interesting one. I mean, Zach Parker, I really wrote him off after that Daryl Williams win, which shouldn't have really won, but he's impressed me. He's impressed me. But I think Amarku now is definitely improving. Looking better and better. He's landing the shots a lot more cleanly now than he used to. I think that was one of the things about him. He has power, but he wasn't landing it as consistently and as clean. He's doing that now. How far do you think Dalton Smith can go? Well, Dalton Smith, when he fought Ray Moylet, I don't know if it was the fact that Moylet looked absolutely horrendous or if it was the fact that Smith didn't seem able to go through the gears until the very end. Dalton Smith should have got rid of him in a couple of rounds. He looked absolutely terrible in there. Shouldn't have been anywhere near the ring. And it took Smith 10 rounds to get rid of him. That kind of, I was like, mm, not ideal. I've seen Smith look a lot better. Grant Smith, his trainer, is fantastic. At the minute now, I'd say he'll probably get to European level. What he does thereafter, I don't know. But I'd say definitely European level so far from what I've seen. From what I've seen. How far do you think Gary Cully can go? Again, Gary Cully is an interesting one. He's a very unique type of character at 135 pounds in a sense that he's six foot two with a crazy reach. So it gives him a big advantage and he definitely has punch and power. He looked good. Eddie Hearn needs to sign him because he wasn't signed to Matchroom when he fought on the Matchroom card there a few months ago. So he's a good shout. Gary Cully was someone who I was a bit unsure about at the start now, I have to say. I think Gary Cully was slapping a lot. I mean, I watched Gary Cully from early on in his career. I watched him from quite early in his career and he slapped a lot early on. You'll see it in his fights. He was slapping a lot. Now he's sitting down the shots and he's actually extending. He's getting proper power in them. So Gary Cooley is an interesting one, but I don't think he's going to trouble the guys at world level, but we will wait and see. McKinson will pull the upset. I mean, I'd be very surprised if he did. What do you think of the Conlon card? Um, I haven't really looked at the Conlon card, to be honest with you, mate. He's fighting Mariaga, I know that. Let's see who's on the card. Mick Conlon. Let's go on the old box rec and have a look. See, because I think that's on the same weekend as Dalton Smith's... Um, Fights Bank Holiday here in Ireland. I think it's the same in the UK. All right, so you've got Paddy Donovan versus Tom Hill. Paddy Donovan, I obviously know quite well. I was not known personally, but I know as a fighter. Um, interesting, like Paddy Donovan. Tyrone McKenna versus Chris Jenkins. McKenna should take that. Podrick McCroy versus Marco Antonio Piraban. Piraban still fighting? Jesus. Um, Podrick McCroy, he's looked a lot better as of late. And you have Ruthan Farrell versus Colin Murphy. That's kind of like a little meeting of two prospects. Colin Murphy should take that. He's looked a bit better as a pro. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's not a bad card, actually, to be fair. Not that bad. Yeah, I don't give him much of a chance. Do you think um, Reynoso gives his fighters performance enhancers? <sighs> Is the Pope Catholic? Because I'm not going to say yeah or nay just in case. God knows who will hear this. Chris Jenkins versus McKenna after that beating. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think Jenkins. But you see, McKenna, McKenna's not look. McKenna got beaten handily against Progress. So we'll need to see how he looks as well. You got to give that you got to give that a reminder as well. Yes. Oh, man. It's real humid here in Ireland at the minute. Like, it's a kind of dry heat. Now, it's probably not that, like, for the American people who are listening, right, I'll tell you, it is 22 degrees, or 27 degrees Celsius in Ireland, 
Now, for a lot of Americans, I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's hot by Irish standards. We're not used to getting that. Although saying that, it's given rain all week this week. Of course it is. It's, it literally is given rain all week this week. Look at that. You can't really see it there, but it's given rain all week this week. Yeah, you can't really see it there. But um, yeah, we're just not used to it over here. Because in June, June was quite a nice month, but it was still freezing cold. Like, that's the thing about Ireland. Like, even when it's nice, it's still cold. Like, June, you weren't leaving your house without your jacket. It was freezing cold still. 37 tomorrow, CAB to go to school. Yeah, school's finished in Ireland. They finish up in around about June time. Because of the humidity, yeah. 84 degrees Fahrenheit on the on the East Coast. What would that be in Celsius? Let's have a look-see. Because I know you guys do it slightly different. 84 degrees Fahrenheit on the East Coast. 84 Fahrenheit to Celsius. Yeah, so it's about the same over there. It's roughly the same on the East Coast as it is here in Ireland. Big up to Brian. What's up, people? Uh, not hot. Not too hot by our standards. Yeah, you see, like, when we get weather like this here, it's just like, what the hell? And no one's ready for it. Like, that's why I said I'd love to go to Florida. But honestly, if I went to Florida, I'd probably spend the first two days in an apartment or condo not knowing how to deal with myself because the flipping heat would be extreme. Because, like, in Ireland, like, it's just, it is rare. I mean, I remember in 2018, we had a heat wave and people couldn't use their water because it was like burning all the well. I think it was having an issue with the water. That's how unprepared we were for heat waves over here. And like people were going to work absolutely dying for a drink and people were selling water like crazy. Uh, well done to Arna, by the way, and a surprise win against the All Blacks. Yeah, I don't really follow rugby. I don't really follow rugby too much, but I know that was a big deal. It's the same, it's 38 Celsius. Damn. Like, you see, now that's Celsius, so it's 10 degrees hotter than here. I don't know how I could do it. I don't know how I could do it. But if I ever want to go Florida for a couple of weeks or months, months maybe, if things go well, then yeah. Yeah. I, I, I The humidity is a killer. Dry heat is nice. It's one of them kind of days where you just want to be sat outside with the beer. Like, it's why? It's a quarter. It's, it's 20 minutes to nine now. And it's still quite warm out. And obviously, in Ireland, it's bright until 11 o'clock at night, most evenings in the summer. So it's always humid and hot out there. But people, I've gone for a little, just under an hour. And I'm going to call it here because I want to get review of the week recorded, which I'm going to do straight after this. And then we get that uploaded tomorrow as we wait for the Conor Ben, Chris Eubank Jr. announcement, which will no doubt come. But people... And everyone, I appreciate everything. Appreciate all the questions, the comments. That's a good question. Who will be Ireland's next champion? I don't, or next world champion? I don't know. That's definitely, a, oh, not in the UK. Probably not. Probably not in the UK. But people, I hope you all have a great Sunday. In the US, in the US, where it's nice and warm over there. I hope you are all having a good day. You need a month to appreciate Florida. I drove the Gulf. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I'd love to do that. About a month in Florida. I, that's the one state. I have like a top of my list. I'd love to see Boston, but just for like a few a few days. But Florida, yeah, that is tick the box. But people, for now, I'm gonna call it there. If you could on the way out, thanks for everyone. Thanks to Karma for the super chat. Appreciate that, pet. Smash the like button on the way out, as Nick says. Support the channel and have a great Sunday. And I hope you all have a great week. Peace.